Hey guys, this will be the last tenor banjo discussion video for a while. I want to talk about a very important tool that I'm using with this tenor banjo, and that is a banjo capo. Now with this, I'm able to do something that is very difficult for a banjo player. And I have seen some of the best banjo players in the world play in a lot of different keys. And I don't know if they're changing the tuning of the instrument or not. I don't know enough about the five string banjo to say. But a lot of their work is really top notch and some of the best that there is. But here we have another shortcut that I use to try and get the uh, just a really different sound out of the instrument. So if we use the key of G and the key of D as an example, okay, if you're a mandolin player, you'll know that the A chord, just the open A chord, is the second fret of the, the lowest string and then the string, the, the two top strings, okay. Um, but on a tenor banjo, that's the key of D. Now, with this, we're able to get the peppy, kind of upbeat, drawn note. You can kind of hear that background, like there's plenty of, plenty of stuff going on. And you can do the same thing in the key of G on this instrument, which is basically just going going up to the next lowest string. Now, why is this important? Well, the best sound that you can get out of a mandolin are in those two patterns. Uh, in the case of the mandolin, it would be the A and the D chords. But with this instrument, it's the D and the G chords. But we can change that. If I put the capo on the second fret, that takes this to E and A. So now we have... We just expanded our chord patterns from maybe being just a single note if you were to try to play it in the key of E up here in standard tuning, and we can bring it... We can bring it to A with the capo on the second fret as well. So we just expanded our sound from just those two chords to four. We can also play it in the key of B by putting it on the fourth fret. And that's... Not a lot of people play in the key of B, but you have that option. And it's kind of hard to imagine having the option to play in the key of B with a banjo. And my favorite is moving it down to the fifth fret and you have G and C, only you have this really sweet sounding little G chord. This It sounds a lot better than the standard G in my opinion. upload I did uh, recently, a red-haired boy. Uh, that one, that song sounded really good in the key of G, and I'm going to record more of those in the higher G setting, because it just sounds a lot better to me. And uh, it's played exactly the same, though. It's just bringing the capo to the fifth fret and playing on the higher strings, these two strings here, which is just, it really makes everything a, a lot simpler because you don't have to relearn how to play all of the frets and notation that you would if you were trying to change the key up here. You just bring the capo down some. And you have, and even better, is you have all of these drawn notes and all of the little ornaments and things that you add in the key that sounds really the best, or rather the pattern that sounds really the best and really utilizes this instrument. And down here, that's also the key of C. is this really different sound that I've never heard on a banjo or really any other type of instrument. It just gives it so much more definition and 
uniqueness. Uh, and then finally, we have the tenor banjo setting, which is on the seventh fret. So we have all of these options now. And the tenor banjo tuning is the same as a mandolin's tuning. So you have, you have all of the things that you would play with the mandolin right here in the tenor banjo setting. So for me, this really changes everything because with this instrument, it's a little difficult to fill in the blanks and get rolls out of something unless you're in these two main keys here. You can get your, you can fill in your blanks and get a lot of ornaments and most of the stuff that you're familiar with, um, with just those two keys. And then we can transform all of those keys all the way down the neck. And you don't have to change anything that you've learned or anything that you do. Uh, if you're a mandolin player, you just play everything the same and you can play them in all these different keys. And it really transforms the sound into just this, really this unique and interesting style that I've not heard with a lot of other instruments. And with this instrument, <clears throat> if you play chords, you can still do limited rolls. And that's... And that really expands the use of the instrument even more. It really helps me keep up with others when I'm in a jam session. Uh, the capo is invaluable for this instrument. But if you're looking into getting a tenor banjo, um, if you're a mandolin player, I highly recommend it. It will change your perspective on, the, on both instruments. Um, if you're looking to learn how to play the banjo, I still suggest that you try the five string before you try a tenor banjo because it's really, there is no, there's no similarities in the, in how you play it. There may be similarities in how it sounds, but if you're someone like me that was coming from the mandolin, I've been around banjo players a lot. I tried to play the five string banjo and I kind of knew what to expect and what, you know, I have already trained my ears to kind of how a banjo sounds. So I'm able to kind of stretch out and reach for that sound while at the same time having something entirely different and unique that I can play all of the music that I've learned on the mandolin in one place. And that's why I think this is probably my, now my favorite instrument because I have so many more options and there's just so much more I can do. It's way more than I had originally expected but I highly recommend getting one if you're interested. Uh, if you want me to do more lessons or more discussions about this instrument, let me know in the comments. If you want to hear more, please let me know. Or if you prefer to hear the mandolin, I would like to know your feedback. But uh, I look forward to hopefully making more videos with this. And I really appreciate you guys watching and uh, thank you for all of the comments and support. See you in the next video.